Got in the boot, Hayden. Hey, you. Come on, get out of there. No. Come on, get out. Uh, give me a hand, will you? Oh. Oh. Well, I guess we'll have to fumigate our luggage now. <laughs> <laughs> to go through the gate. You mean to tell me I can't get through here to the railroad if I don't pay? That's what I mean. Don't pay it, mister. You keep your trap shut. Not me. I'm a citizen of the United States, and free speech is part of the Constitution. Maybe so, but free passage through that toll gate ain't. Sheep, cattle, grain, pigs, or passengers all pay to go through the Colby Ranch. Colby Ranch? Why, you got every road in this territory blocked. You ain't gonna stop me this time. My homestead in my place, and you ain't gonna keep me from making a living off my own land. Hey, come here. Come back here. I don't believe in shooting an unarmed man, my friend. You better pay your toll charge and get out of here. Gunplay might cause you a peck of trouble, stranger. Stay up, Romeo. Two dollars more for the baggage. And anybody that wears a suit like that ought to pay double. Thanks. I'm glad you like it. <clears throat> hey, you want to ride that stage pay up? I haven't got any money. Then hightail it out of here. All right, Frank, get going. Better get out of here before the same thing happens to you. Better do as he says, stranger. Put the body in the stage and hold the wagon until his folks pay the charges.
Nestor tried to crash the gate, so I picked him off. Well, Old Faithful sure can do it. Maybe if we killed off a few more of those Nestors, they'd teach them a lesson and they'd pay off without squealing. You've got something there. It's a perfect setup. I'll see you in Rawhide. All right, Barrett. and around the Colby Ranch. I'm a hungry man looking for something to eat. Well, you won't find it there unless you figure on eating horse meat. Where are you from? Anywhere you want a name. But just now, I came from Rawhide. How about giving a pal some ham and eggs? Sure you want trailing someone? It's a long walk from Rawhide. <laughs> I'm a long walker. Yeah? Well, where's your blanket, though? You haven't even got a coat. Well, I pawned my coat on Rawhide to get me something to eat. Mm -hmm. Where's the ticket? <laughs> Sold the ticket to get me a pair of shoes. What are you doing around here? Have you seen him before? Well, sure. I just kicked him off the stagecoach. Uh oh, so you walked, did you? Well, I hitched a ride part of the way. Well, I'm going to give you a chance to prove your story, mister. I'll get aboard that horse. But you'd better have a coat in that pawn shop in Rawhide, because if you haven't, you've walked your last mile. Too hot for your presence inside? Well, you might take a look. Oh! Another nester killed. Yeah. Stage driver tells me it's been happening quite often lately. If I was sheriff, I'd put a stop to it quick. Well, it's not as easy as you think. Yeah, I guess you're right. I understand the little ranches are a pretty bad lot. They sure are. But I'm going to see that we have law and order here. You're not wearing a star. Are you the marshal? No, uh, I'm Sam Barrett. I represent the big ranchers. I'm sorry, but I never heard of you. Oh, I have. Uh, you're the boss of Rawhide, ain't you? That's right. Somebody sure got a nice racket around here, forcing the little ranchers to pay for every move they make. I don't see that's any of your business. Me under that counter. If you owe me a face, I'll blast your head off. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. So you watch me, and I'll give you the answer. Oh, I came to get my coat. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Did he pawn that coat here? He yes, 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 yes. That's uh, a little tight for you, isn't it? It shrunk a little when I fell in the river last week. Oh, I'll be back and pay you later. your friend? Why, uh, just some tramp I picked up. Why? Oh, nothing except I gave that coat to a hobo last week, but that's not him.
twenty dollars. Make it ten. Make it fifteen. Make it seven fifty. If you can go up, I can go down. You're breaking my heart for ten dollars. All right, then. I'm breaking your heart for ten dollars. But if you say anything about this, I'll have you arrested for highway robbery. <laughs> ten dollars for a three dollar coat. <laughs> Hey, what was going on in there? Well, whatever it was, it cost me $10. We better get our horses from the livery stable and ride out to the meeting place. Jed, get us a room at the hotel. We'll be back after a while. Oh, sure, sure. You're looking fine today. Oh, thank you, Mr. Holden. So are you. <laughs> What's the matter, Bert? You look worried. Well, I'm concerned, Mr. Holden. Another rancher was killed today. Is that so? Yeah. Who was it? Old man Jeffries. A Jeffries ranch, huh? Mm -hmm. Nice choice piece of property, too. I'll ride out in a few days and see the wood and buy it up. And we'll own all the land in Rawhide Valley. There's one thing that worries me. What's that? That tramp you were talking to is a ranger. Old man White's son. I reckon the boys can take care of him. If we don't, we'd better lay low for a while till we find out what's behind this investigation. That's right. You owe me ten dollars. Why, what for, Pan Adam? That fancy coat you're wearing. Ah, it isn't worth it. Well, now, Tex, you can't do it. Now, wait a minute, Pan Handle. Tex will see that you get your money. Hey, what were you doing? Trailing a man with a rifle, but he was too smart for me. Hey, I thought that was a rifle shot I heard. Yeah, and a mighty high-powered one. Well, boys, I can tell you right now, this is no ordinary bunch of gunfighters we're up against. By using that rifle, they can kill from such a distance they can get away before anybody can pick up their trail. Where'd you see them? Over at the Colby Ranch. What'd you and Pan had to learn in town? I met a fellow by the name of Barrett. By talking to him, I don't think that by just rounding up the killer, we're going to help the farmers and ranchers very much. Yeah, I think you're right. Even if we did manage to get them all in jail, Colby would just hire more gunfighters to take their places. Hey, do you think Colby's behind it? Well, it's a good guess. The toll gate was on his ranch. Yeah, he's the kingpin around here, all right. Just look at the land he owns. And the worst part about it, the other big ranchers are following his lead. That's why the whole district of Rawhide is practically hemmed in by toll gates. Well, what are you going to do, Tex? Them gun toters have got you pegged. Next thing you know, they'll find out you're a ranger. Well, if you think I should, I'd better come out in the open. But they mustn't know we're working together. They won't. <laughs> I convinced that pawnbroker that he better not do any talking. And it's certain they'll never suspect minstrels or rangers. <laughs> we got to meet three more of our bones. I sure hope we can get away with it. Well, so do I. Say, Jim, I'm going to pick up a horse and ride over and talk to my dad. I'll meet you two in Rawhide. So long. So long. So long. Hello, Dad. Tex Wyatt. You know, one of the chief requirements of the service is neatness. Now, what are you doing in that tramp office? Carrying out the detail you sent me on, sir. Oh, relax, son. 
I guess even a soldier can have his moments of affection. I suppose you made your arrest. No, no, as a matter of fact, I didn't. But with the help of Jim and Panhandle, I learned a lot of things. A man by the name of Barrett has the whole district under his thumb. And, uh, Dad, I think this is one time that you should get into the fight. Well, that's the first time you ever admitted you couldn't carry out a detail. Oh, we'll handle the gunfighters all right. It's the ranchers and small farmers I'm worried about. Of course, it's a dangerous assignment. Three men have been killed already. And I wouldn't want to see you get mixed up in a situation where you might meet up with some hot lead. Why, you young whippersnapper. I've dodged more lead than you can carry. Wait a minute. What are you trying to sell me, huh? Dad, when the gun toters that are terrorizing the district are rounded up, I want to make sure another crop doesn't spring up. Now, you're well known in Rawhide. I want you to run for land commissioner. Land commissioner? Why? Well, I've never heard of such an office. There hasn't been. I want you to create one. Dad, can't you see what it would mean? For the first time in the history of our country, there will be a man in the capital representing the small rancher. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to this large and enthusiastic audience the King of Minstrels, Mr. Octavius Romeo Jones. And his equally famous partner, Mr. Bones. Mr. Adnoy and Slim Pickens. Gentlemen, be seated. Oh, Mr. Bones, uh, mm -hmm. why I do a cheeky cross the road? Oh. Mr. Romeo, don't tell me you're gonna ask me that old joke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, son, you better dance, dance. What's the matter, boy? You in trouble? Boy, I sure is. Hey. Did you see that hallucination sitting out there? Uh huh. Uh huh. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our silver throated singer of the sagebrush will entertain you with I Ain't Got No Girl to Come Home To. <laughs> I got a horse and a house, a ranch and some range, but I ain't got a gal to come home to. I got some cows and some calves, some bills and some change, but I ain't got a gal to come home to. So I'll fix up my house and I'll saddle my horse and I'll find me a pretty western maid who will smile down at me from a quaint balcony and listen to my cowboy serenade. If the serenade's right, I'll be riding high. There's no other place that I'll roam to. There'll be two on my horse, and with a whoopee dying. He'll bring home a gal to come home to. <laughs> and he ain't got a gal to come home to either, ma'am. Really? And he isn't named Romeo for nothing. I'm so glad you told me. I, Mrs. Periwinkle, a widow. I wish you boys had taken care of that tramp that was in town. How did we know he was a ranger? You got nothing to worry about, and he won't show his nose in this town. Jim Davis, glad to see you. Well, Sam, I suppose you're still running everything around here the same as ever. That's right, and I intend to continue. Say, boys, uh, do you know my son? How are you? Yeah, yeah. we met. Well, that's good, because I'm afraid you're going to see a lot of him. Say, Tex, you suppose we might hire these minstrels to ballyhoo for us? Ballyhoo? Ballyhoo for what? 
Well, my father's gonna run for land commissioner. He feels that the ranchers and small farmers around here need representation. Come on, Dad. Now, he ain't that something. Land commissioner? What's that? I don't know. They're after your scout, Barrett. If Wayne thinks he's gonna cut in on our deal, he's got another thing coming. Well, Mr. Holden. Yes? I just picked up an idea that'll make you top man in this territory. Well, thanks, but I'm doing all right. Yeah, but you'd do a lot better if you represented all the ranchers around here, wouldn't you? Yes, I guess I would. How do you plan on doing it? Wyatt's trying to be a land commissioner and pass all the laws for the small ranchers. Now, I'm going to put you up to run against him, but you represent the big money. And the laws you make will squeeze the little man out. Fine. Say, that'll make our operations look legal, won't it? That's right. What about Colby, though? He's the most influential man in this territory. All the other ranch owners might follow his lead. Colby will back you up all right. Hayden and I will see to that. Sounds all right to me. Fine. Then I'll get your campaign rolling. Fine, Mr. Colby, just fine. Why, well, I don't believe you've met my daughter. Mary, this is Mr. Barrett. How do you do? How do you know you? Mr. Hayes, foreman of our ranch. Mr. Hayes. That know you, Miss Mary. How long do we have to wait for the stage to rawhide? Well, it's usually here when the old one pulls in. I don't know what's holding it up. Well, we might as well go inside and sit down. Fine. Sure. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Why, well, hiya, boys. You know, someday you're going to own your own ranches, and when you do, you'll need a friend. Vote for John Wyatt. Why, hello, everybody. Oh, hello. My, isn't it a shame you can't vote, because if you could, here is the man you should vote. What's the meaning of that? Meaning of what? That sign on the stagecoach. Well, you can read, can't you? Of course I can. I want to know what my name is doing on it. Oh, are you Mr. Colby? Yes, I am. Then you ought to know why it's there. Well, that's trying to be land commissioner around here and drag our names into it. You know Bill Holden. He's our candidate. Yes, sir. We're going to teach those nesters a lesson. They've been tearing down your fences, stealing your cattle, so I put up gates with guards. Why don't you also tell Mr. Colby that you're charging the poor ranchers for going through those gates? I guess my foreman knows what he's doing. He sure does. Abe, tear that sign off the stagecoach. Yes, sir. Just a minute. I guess you were wrong to tell him to tear down that sign, Dad. Sure was, ma'am. Well, I was a little surprised at seeing my name on it. A few other things that might surprise you going on around here, Mr. Colby. Well, let's get on the stagecoach and go to Rawhide, Dad. Oh, you can't ride on that stagecoach without his permission, ma'am. That's right. Yes, you see, John Wyatt hired the stage for campaign purposes. Of course, I don't mind passengers if they don't mind the sign. Well, I certainly do, and I'm not riding in that stage until you tear that sign down. Suit yourself. Spend the night here if you want to. Might be a little cold. Well, stranger, I guess we have no other choice. Uh, you won't find us such bad traveling companions, Mr. Colby. Our faces may be black, but we sure know how to treat people with white. Yeah, 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 yeah. Barrett, the boys won't know we're on that stage. I'm not going to get on it. Hurry up, Barrett. Come on, hey. We'll have to take a chance, I guess. Maybe we can steer him off.
I thought Barrett said those missiles are going to hire a wagon. He did, but the stage has got the sign on it, and he's up on top there with the driver. Now, Barrett said to make this look like a holdup. Now, don't shoot the driver, but make sure that Wyatt's campaign for votes ends right now. Stagecoach, so you hired some men to kill us. Well, if I did, then why did I stop them? I'm inclined to agree with Mr. Wyatt. Thanks. There's some things I wish you and I could agree on, Mr. Colby. I'd like you to have a talk with my father. What good will that do? Why don't you do it, Dad? As a matter of fact, we could make it an open meeting with some representatives of some of the ranchers present. It might give you a better idea of the trouble we've been having around here lately. Yeah, why not hold a meeting tomorrow afternoon uh, in the town hall? Well, that's a good idea. We'll put on our minstrel show, and maybe for once we'll have a crowd, huh? I'm not attending any meeting. How about you, Mr. Colby? I'll be there. Thanks. Now, this is a sample of what they've been doing, boss. Are you sure Nestor's did it? Well, of course I am, Miss Mary. I run them off. Oh? Now you see, Mr. Colby, why we need laws around here to protect big ranchers like yourself. You're right. I'll have a talk with Holden and help him with his campaign. That's fine. I thought you told me you were never going to mix in politics. Well, now, Mary, this is different. Oh. You're going to the meeting. I'll be present, but nobody will see me. I've been talking to Colby. And if we don't watch out, he's liable to take sides with Wyatt. Well, if that road through the Colby ranch is open to the farmers, our goose is cooked. I didn't get control of this territory to turn it over to a man named Wyatt. I think it's just about time for Old Faithful to do a little talking. You two join the crowd. Break up that meeting before it goes too far.
like that? Mr. Barnes over there been telling me about his forefathers. Uh, what do he mean? Why, that's easy to understand. Everyone has forefathers. Said which? Does you mean to say that I have got forefathers? Why, certainly. Your father's 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 father. Well, doggone. Man, if I is, three of them never did come home. <laughs> Uh, what happened to a chicken when it lays an egg? Well, no, Mr. Rummy Nose. What do happen to a chicken when it lays an egg? Man, it's shell shock. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't so smart. Yeah, can you answer a chicken griddle? Man, you don't mean griddle, you mean griddle. But go on, elucidate. Go ahead. Well, if a hen laid an orange, what would the little chicken say? Man, you don't know hen ain't gonna lay no orange, but go on, boy. What did that little chicken say? Look at the orange, Mama Lee. <laughs> If it was a lemon, it'd be a lemonade. <laughs> hey, this phone, this phone, this phone. Yeah. Uh, I just bought my gal a beautiful new squirrel coat. Mm -hmm. You think it would hurt it if she wore it out in the rain? Well, I've been out in the rain many a time, and I never saw a squirrel carry an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> Talk that little old boy over there, that Mr. Bones. He killed me stealing his pants. No, no, no. Wait a minute. I didn't accuse you of stealing my pants. What I said was, if you hadn't helped me look for my pants, I might have found them. Well, Mr. Interlocutor, now do you think I was dishonest enough that I would stoop so low as to steal his pants? Uh, you, you, you didn't have to stoop. They was hanging on the wall. <laughs> Mr. Romeo has done an awful lot for you, and yet you accuse him of stealing. Is that gratitude? Says which? Gratitude. Don't you know what gratitude is? Mm-mm. Very well, then I'll explain. Last winter, I found a little kitten, and I took it to my home, put it in a nice warm room, gave it a big bowl of milk. Would you believe that after the kitten had drank the milk, it came over and licked my hand in gratitude? Now do you know what gratitude is? Mm, well, for sure not. What is it? Uh, a cat full of milk. <laughs> Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Uh, oh, yeah, I boss. Uh, what was that you tell me about a horse? Well, I said I had a horse, and every time it talked, people dropped dead. What said a horse that makes people drop dead? That's right. Doggone, boy. What kind of horse is that that makes people drop dead? A colt. Don't shoot, boy, don't shoot. Ladies and gentlemen, before continuing on with our performance, I feel that we should hear from our good friend, John Wyatt. And as I should like to have Mr. Wyatt come up here, this talented assembly will please leave the platform. Ooh. Hello. It's all right. You can never get it. What's your first name? Have you got a first name? Friends, in the past few years, our country has made great progress in railroads, machinery, and factories. But in the tremendous achievement of the Iron Age, the men who feed the millions of people in those factories, you farmers and ranchers, you've been forgotten. Well, the big ranchers have been doing a pretty good job of feeding the millions. Also, it's the big ranchers who keep the taxes down. That's right. <laughs> well, I know that you owners of large ranches are fine, fair-minded citizens. And you believe, as I do, that live and let live is one of the foundation stones of our great democracy. of the small farmer and rancher 
has never been brought to the attention of the people of this right. country. Mr. Colby! Mr. Colby! Mr. Colby! The Hester tore down your fence and run all the cattle off the North Range. There you are, Mr. Colby. Just what you might expect. This was a trick to get me out of the way. I thought a ranger was supposed to be on the side of law and order. Now, wait a minute, Colby. Don't make any accusations you can't prove. Well, right, now, you wait a minute. Now, look where you're going. Get your hands off. Ah. Intended for you, Mr. Colby. That's a lie. After dodging bullets the way I have, I think some sneaking polecat picked me off from ambush. I'm sorry I got you into this, Dad. Now, wait a minute, son. You aren't thinking of quitting, are you? Not by a long shot. Here's the bullet that got you. I got these other three from the sheriff. All fired from the same rifle. Jim and I went with him and examined every rifle in these parts, and not one of them matches the caliber of these bullets. Well, all we got to do is find that rifle and the man that owns it. That's right, Panhandle. All we got to do is find the rifle and the man that owns it. Hey, Tex. Ain't that the coat you got in that pawn shop? Yeah, I brought it along. I thought maybe you'd want to get your $10 back. Well, I sure do. Yeah, Panhandle needs money now. He's buying gee gaws for the widow Periwinkle. <laughs> oh, shucks. Uh, I am not. Well, uh, I'll see you later, Mr. Wyatt. Haven't any idea who owns that rifle? Have you, son? No, I haven't. But we'll find him. I insist, Mr. Colby. The bullet that hit Wyatt was intended for you. Why should anyone want to kill my father? Because he owns a big ranch. And the bad nesters in this territory are trying to break up the large ranches so they can grab off the land. Mr. Wyatt doesn't seem to think so. His opinion is that the small ranchers are trying to make a living in their own way. I don't think your father will listen to Wyatt. No, I should say not. You'll have to if they put him into office. You can't oppose the rule of the majority. You know that, Dad. If Wyatt's elected to represent the people, he'll pass laws against all big ranches. Like your father's and mine, and that'll cut off half our income. Well, I guess we'll just have to live on the other half then. I don't think we'll starve. You just don't understand big business, Mary. No, and you haven't been around here long enough to really know what goes on. Now, I know these nesters a lot better than you do, and it wouldn't surprise me a bit if they destroyed more of your father's property. I'm afraid you and I don't agree about the small ranchers, Mr. Barrett. I studied them pretty carefully in the town hall. And to me, they look like plain, honest people. Well, the election will show who's right. You keep me posted. All right, I will. When are you going to start thinking for yourself, Dad? Here's your coat. I want my ten dollars back. I can't take that back. You let the moths get into it. What do you mean, moths? Them were silverfish. Silverfish? Well, let me alone. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, I'll give you my ten dollars. I'll give you two and a half. I'll give you five. Wait, 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 Look at this rifle bullet I found in his coat. Barrett said that coat belonged to him. Looks like he's the man we're after. Keep your chin up, Dad. Yeah, take good care of this coat and uh, keep your chin up, Captain. It won't do any harm to trail them. Yeah, you're right as rain, Jim. Well, 
Well, they certainly disappeared into thin air. Well, I think they went up that canyon. No, the last time I saw them, they were heading over that hill. I'm sure they didn't see us. Well, maybe they split up. Well, maybe we'd better split up if we expect to pick up their trail. We'll meet back here. Minister Monkey coming his way. All right, you mountain canary, this is as far as you go. Get down. Over there. Spill it, Songbird. What are you doing nosing around here? Well, didn't you ever hear of a singer coming to the mountains to exercise his vocal cords? No, I didn't. Well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go ahead and exercise them. You mean it? Sure, go ahead. I don't
sure knows this country better than we do. I heard you singing. What are you trying to do? Let them know we were around? No, I was trying to let Tex know they were around. I was sure stupid not to get it sooner. I almost walked right into him before I caught on. Say, what are you talking about? <laughs> you wouldn't understand, Romeo. <laughs> You. Wait a minute, Panhandle. He saw us first. When I miss my guess, he'll head back to town. Maybe you'd better ride back with us, Miss Colby. All right. Colby's daughter saw me the rifle. We're pulling out. Jim, this is all we need. Mary, my father's in a hotel. Will you take it to his room? All right, Tex.
Who's in this with you, Aide? Bill Holden, there's uh, money behind it. Get going. Mr. Holden, fall in. I don't know what you mean. You'll find out. Fall in. Mr. Wyatt, I came over to tell you, you can count on the support of all of the big ranchers in the Rawhide District. Oh, thank you, Mr. Colby. In the saddle, yippee ki yay, yippee ki yay, yippee ki yay, and I come from the border down Texas way. Yip, yippee ki yay. We're from Boston Rangers all the day through. If you bust the law, we will bust you. We're high in the saddle, yippee ki yay, yippee ki yay, yippee ki yay. 